Hello and welcome to Grandstream Networks. In this video, we will take a look at some basic troubleshooting guidelines to help you find out and eventually resolve issues on your Grandstream devices. As you might know, Grandstream Networks has a help desk to provide support services to assist you in addressing your queries and problems with any Grandstream solution. The Grandstream help desk goal is to provide you with information, resources, and tips to help you resolve your technical issues and get you back into functioning mode quickly. In general, problems with unified communications can involve many factors such as your networking, configuration, security, software, and even hardware. And sometimes it could be something simple that you can fix without the need to submit a help desk ticket. In this video, I will outline some basic things that you should check when you run into an issue. First, start with the obvious. Make sure the device is connected correctly and it is assigned an IP address. So when devices are not plugged in correctly, obviously they won't work. It is very common that a cable gets connected to the wrong port. For example, if you work with parts lines, you want to make sure that you use the FXO ports and use FXS ports when working with analog devices. You can also use the LED status indicators uh, to verify if a specific cable is plugged in correctly. In addition, most devices come with an LCD menu which shows hardware, software, interface status, and network information and can be used to configure basic network settings, run diagnostic tests, and factory reset in case needed. You can also use the LCD menu to get the IP address of the device in case you need to access the web interface. All Grandstream IP phones show the IP address and the network status page as shown in this slide. It is always recommended to monitor the device dashboard or status page for any anomalies. And it is one of the first things that you need to look at when you run into an issue. For example, the UCM includes a dashboard which helps you get a clear picture of how the system is running in real time. It displays snapshots of the UCM overall performance. For example, data partition displays how much local storage is used. When the local storage of the UCM is full, users might experience issues with call recording, voicemails not being saved, and anything that needs to use the local storage of the UCM. A real-time monitoring of CPU usage can also serve as a useful indication of unusual or suspicious traffic. For instance, when there are no calls on the UCM and you notice that the CPU usage is too high, like 95 or 99 percent, that might indicate that the UCM is processing a lot of traffic in the background, which might be malicious traffic. The UCM supports external storage to be used for call recording, backup, and other services. So when you have an SD card or USB drive connected to the UCM, the dashboard will display information about the total capacity of the drive and the amount of the storage used. This is the first thing you want to check when you try to do a backup and it fails, because it might be that you do not have enough storage on the external drive. In case outbound calls to external numbers fail, you want to check the status of the trunks to make sure that they are registered or available. This section displays interface port connection status on the UCM. For instance, if an analog trunk is not working, you could use this section to verify if the analog lines are connected or not. The same thing applies to external devices and Ethernet interfaces. Number three, ensure your device is running the latest firmware version it is always recommended to have Grandstream devices updated to the latest official firmware version published on the Grandstream website. The program or PROG version and the system information or system status represents the existing firmware version on the device. You can use either the LCD menu or web interface of the device to check that information. Most Grandstream devices come with built-in utilities to help you troubleshoot and diagnose problems on the device. Traceroute is a useful tool to diagnose network connections. It traces the route an IP packet takes to reach its destination. 
it's going to be very helpful in determining where a packet fails or gets delayed. Next, Bing is commonly used to test or verify the reachability of a host over an IP network. NSLOOKUP is another useful utility to obtain the domain name or IP address of a target host. NSLOOKUP is usually used when a DNS issue is suspected. There is also the utility to take PCAP captures that can be read with Wireshark, and that is something that we use a lot to troubleshoot issues related to SIP stack or other communication protocols. And then we have syslog, which is used to collect system logs and event messages. So if you have tried everything and are still experiencing a problem, it is time to submit a support ticket with the Grandstream help desk. To help you resolve the problem quickly, we encourage you to provide enough information to help the support engineer understand the problem and provide a troubleshooting plan. The first step in the troubleshooting process is describing the problem. So when you open a ticket with Grandstream support, providing descriptive details about the issue is very crucial to solving the problem. So always clearly describe the symptoms of the problem and include any process that may be required to reproduce the problem. This is very important because if the support engineer is able to reproduce the issue, you will not be asked to provide any additional information like logs or traces. Also confirm if the issue is intermittent or it happens every time. Sometimes when a transaction fails, the device will generate a voice prompt or an error message. And it is important to share these messages with the support team because they provide hints to what the issue or problem is. And of course, if you have made changes to the network or the configuration of the device, make sure you include that as well. Sometimes describing the issue is not enough to determine the cause, so you might be requested to collect and provide supporting information, such as screenshots of the configuration or error message. And in some cases, you will be asked to shoot a short video that captures the reported behavior. The Grandstream UCM and most IP phones have the capability to capture traffic that passes over a network interface. When running into issues related to call routing or networking, it is always recommended to include PCAP traces that capture the problem so that an engineer can analyze them to identify the cause of the issue. And sometimes when the PCAP traces did not provide useful information to identify the cause of an issue, you might be asked to provide syslog traces, which contain syslog logs and events. In a moment, I will show you how to run PCAP traces and syslog on a UCM and an IP phone. So to log into the web interface of the UCM, make sure you use the correct IP address of the UCM. Then you type in your login credentials. So the built-in troubleshooting tools included in the UCM are available under maintenance tab. Some of them are included under network troubleshooting. So here we find the Ethernet capture, IP ping, and trace route. So let's start with the trace route. So as mentioned earlier, the Traceroute Diagnostic Utility verifies the route an IP packet takes to reach its target host. And Traceroute can be useful uh, in troubleshooting networks where several routes coexist. For instance, when you have an internet connection and a VPN tunnel, and you want to make sure that the traffic to a specific target host goes through the VPN tunnel, Traceroute can help you determine that. So let's use an example here. So I'm going to enter grandstream.com so we can see what kind of output we're going to get. So when I enter grandstream.com, the first thing it does, it resolves the domain name to a public IP address. So this is the public IP address of that domain name. So this is a good thing because it shows you whether your DNS actually works or not. If you use a domain name and it doesn't work, but when you use the IP address, it works, that could be an issue related to DNS. So that gives you a hint or an idea where to start your troubleshooting. So in this example, the output shows the path the packet travels through. It shows my gateway and it shows three time periods here. So these time periods display the around trip time 
for the packet to reach that specific gateway, which is my gateway in this case, and return back to the UCM. And this is listed in milliseconds. And there are three time periods because the trace route sends three separate ICMP uh, packets. So the same thing applies to the next hop. It gives you information about the time uh, the packet took to reach the target host and return to the UCM. The same thing with the third hop. The next tool is IP Pink, which is another useful tool to verify the reachability of a target host and measure the time needed to get a response when you send a request. So we're going to try the same thing here. So we can use Grandstream Networks. And then it gives you here the same thing. It gives you the IP address or the public IP address associated with that domain name. And it gives you also the round trip time. And then here it gives you the average, the minimum, and the maximum. So you can analyze them for consistency. The third tool available on the Grandstream UCM is Ethernet Capture or PCAP Capture. Usually when you run into an issue on the UCM and you open a ticket with the Grandstream help desk, depending on the, the nature of the issue, we might ask you to provide Ethernet captures or PCAP captures. So if you're ever asked to provide PCAP capture, you're just going to come to this page and then it provides you with some information here. So the capture type that we are usually going to ask you is the Ethernet capture. There's also the other option, which is WebSocket. And this option, we would only request it in case we're doing some troubleshooting on the Grandstream Wave web on your browser. So most of the time, we're going to be dealing with Ethernet capture. Then the interface type, it provides you with the two interfaces, LAN and local. In some cases, when the UCM is in route mode, you might see LAN, WAN, and local. Let me show you this example here. This UCM is in route mode. So it's going to provide you with three interfaces, WAN, LAN, and local. So when you are using a route mode on your UCM, you want to make sure where the issue is. If the WAN interface is connected to the VoIP provider and you are experiencing issues with calls to external numbers, you want to select the WAN interface. So let me go back here. So here I'm going to select LAN. And then we have two options here. We have enable SFTP data sync. This is in case you want to save the traces on an SFTP server. And then there is the option in case you want to save the traces to an external storage. Because by default, those traces are saved on the local storage of the UCM. So in case you decide to choose the SFTP, you need to make sure that SFTP is configured on your UCM. And the configuration of SFTP is done under backup data sync. And this is where you configure your SFTP server. OK, let me go back here. In case you want to use an external storage drive, just make sure you have a USB drive plugged into your UCM. Because if you try to select this option and you don't have an external drive, it's going to generate this error. So usually it depends because uh, you will need to use an external drive on SFTP server in case you need to run the trace for a long time when you try to capture an issue. But in case the issue is easy to reproduce, what you're going to need to do is choose Ethernet Capture, LAN, then start the trace. Once the trace started, then you can go ahead and reproduce the issue on the UCM. When you're done reproducing the issue, then you can come back here and then click on Stop. And once the trace is stopped, you will have the option to download it. So you can save it here. And then you can take this file, which is a compressed file, and upload it to the ticket. The other tool available on the UCM is Syslog. And as I mentioned, Syslog is a protocol that is used to send the system logs and system events to a Syslog server. Usually when we ask you to run traces with Syslog, you don't need to have a Syslog in place. You can just, for example, include the IP address of your gateway or any internal IP address in your network and then choose the, mo the modules. Some of the modules are obvious, like LDAP, uh, zero config. But usually, we're going to provide you with which modules to uh, enable when you run the syslog. If you go down here, you will see that there are uh, many other modules that you can choose from. And as I mentioned, that's something that we're going to provide you with instructions which modules to uh, enable. So once you have the syslog 
IP address enabled, then you just click on start and apply the changes. Once you start and apply the changes, you can come back here and then network troubleshooting and then start the capture. What's going to happen is the UCM is going to use the PCAP capture to trace all those syslog uh, messages that the UCM sends out. So you will be able to capture all the logs that the UCM sends using syslog protocol using the PCAP capture. And I have a trace here that I would like to share with you so I can show you how it's going to look like from the PCAP trace. So this is a PCAP trace that was taken from the UCM. And it shows that the UCM was able to capture all the logs that the UCM was sending using the syslog protocol. And in general, this is how the PCAP capture works. So when you download the PCAP capture, you can read them and analyze those logs and packets using Wireshark. It is a free software that you can download from Wireshark.org. So once you have the Wireshark installed on your computer, then you can use Wireshark to analyze the packets or PCAP traces that you take from your Grandstream device. There is a long list of filters that you can use, but one of them is syslog. So when we ask you to provide syslog, just to make sure that your trace includes syslog, you can just come here and enter syslog and then hit enter. And then it's going to show you all the syslog messages. In case you are doing troubleshooting on the DNS, then you can filter, for example, by DNS, then it's going to show you all the DNS messages that were exchanged by the UCM. So now that we've covered the troubleshooting tools in the Grandstream UCM, let's look at the available troubleshooting utilities in the Grandstream IP phones. So I'm going to log into my GRP2615 using my login credentials. So when you log into the web interface of the IP phone, you will be presented with the account status, which is also useful because it allows you to see whether the accounts are registered or not. Another useful information that you can find under system information is the Corda. So in case you notice that your IP phone is freezing or showing some signs of crashing, you can always come here under the cordon and check if there are any cordons generated by the IP phones. If that is the case, it gives you the option to download them. Just download the cordon and then open a ticket and describe the issue and attach those cordons to your ticket. So for the other troubleshooting tools, they are available under maintenance. So first we look at the ping and trace route. So as I mentioned earlier, the ping is a tool used to test and verify the reachability of a host over an IP network and the trace route uh, is used to trace the route an IP packet takes to reach its target host. And they work pretty much the same way as I showed you on the Grandstream UCM. Next, let's look at the packet capture. So this is the PCAP capture that we use to trace issues that are related to a specific call or provisioning or any service that is built into the IP phone. So you have two options. You can use the internal storage or a USB. The USB option is available only on the IP phones that have a USB port. For example, if you are using a GXP2130, which doesn't have a USB port, you will not see this option. But usually we're going to be dealing with internal storage. Then we have RTP packets. RTP packets, as you know, is the protocol used to carry audio during a call. So if we're troubleshooting something that has to do with a call, we can set that one to yes. But in case we're troubleshooting something that is related to provisioning or a service like an LDAP service on the IP phones, we don't need to check this option. But in case you don't know which one to use, you can check, you can set it to yes. USB file name, this option, you can figure it in case you use the USB uh, option here. But we're going to leave everything as a default. So when you are asked by the Grandstream support engineer to provide a trace that captures a specific issue, you just come here, use internal storage, you can sit down to yes if you want to, and then start the trace. Once you see that the trace is running, you can go ahead and replicate the issue that you described in the ticket. And once you are able to replicate the issue, you can come back here and stop the trace. Then you can download them and you can attach those uh, PCAP traces to your tickets with a description, of course, of the test call that you made.
The other tool available in, in the IP phones is the syslog. The syslog, as I mentioned, is the protocol used to send the system logs and alerts to a syslog server. Syslog on the IP phones supports two options. There is UDP and there is SSL in case you want to send uh, syslog traffic encrypted. In case you have your own syslog server that supports SSL TLS, just make sure that you have a trusted CA certificate configured right here. Otherwise, SSL TLS syslog is not going to work. But in most cases, when you are asked by a support engineer to provide traces with syslog, in case you don't have a syslog server in place, you can just enter a local IP address, for example, the IP address of your router or gateway and then set this option to debug because we want to capture all the logs generated by the system. This option here, you don't need to configure it because we're interested in all the uh, packets. This is an advanced option where you can tell the IP phone to capture logs related to a specific string. You want to set this option to yes when troubleshooting issues related to calls. So I'm just going to leave the rest of them as a default. Then I'm going to save and apply the changes. The syslog on the IP phones doesn't take effect unless you reboot the system. So after you configure your settings and you save and apply the changes, make sure you come here and then reboot the IP phone for the syslog to take effect. So once the phone boots up, then you can come here under package capture, then you can start the capture and replicate the issue. This will capture both the network traffic as well as the syslog that the IP phone sends. And both traffic will be presented in one PCAP capture that support engineer can look at to analyze the reported issue. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Video Guides. Don't forget to hit that like button and leave a comment below on what you think should be our next video guide or GS tutorial. Thank you and I'll see you next time.